I and many others will frequently meme on snaps and will probably never stop doing so because look, they kinda deserve it. You have all of this FOSS tooling around it and then for some reason a proprietary snap store. You spam the system with loop devices and you have sandboxing that doesn't actually work properly outside of Ubuntu. But I will give them credit where credit is due. The Snap Store has a lot of first party applications. And I don't just mean first party support from FOSS projects that you also see over on FlatHub as well. Things like Mozilla, GNOME, and KDE, or just random independent things. I mean first party officially supported applications from proprietary tools like the JetBrains suite, like Slack, like Skype, like Opera, along with FOSS tools like. Bitwarden, Nextcloud, Brave, and a bunch of others. Now this isn't just a coincidence, it's not like all of these companies just randomly decided, okay guys, for our Linux package, it is going to be available as a snap. Beforehand, a lot of these companies were probably just shipping a deb, maybe it wasn't even in a package manager, it was just like a deb you download from a website. And maybe down the line, new people joined up because other people were doing it, but the reason why a lot of these early packages started on the Snap Store is Canonical actually reached out to these companies. They sent people out there, they advocated for the Snap Store, and helped them build up these pipelines to generate a Snap package and onboard them onto the store. This is something Canonical did really well, and it's the reason why the Snap Store grew so quickly in those early days. Now it's totally understandable that FlatHub can't do this. Canonical, whilst being a lot smaller than Red Hat, is still a massive for-profit company that can afford to pay some full-time developers to go out and do this for a couple of months and build up this Snap Store environment. But that doesn't mean that nothing at all can be done on FlatHub. There are people involved in the Flatpak and FlatHub space that have been around for a while. They have a lot of connections, they know a lot of people in a lot of different places, and know how to get things done. And all the way back in August, Cassidy James Blade, who you may know as the co-founder of Elementary, nowadays working at the Endless OS Foundation, put out this post over on Mastodon. I'm going to dip my toes into volunteering as a Flatpak slash FlatHub developer advocate. Basically, providing a human contact at a real company that can help larger apps slash companies get their apps in front of Linux and thus Steam Deck users. What are some of the biggest apps you think are missing from FlatHub or for apps already there, which are the ones you'd like to see verified? And there are a lot of fairly good suggestions. Is Chrome there yet? If not, that one. Google Chrome is indeed on FlatHub, but not verified. I've got to talk to some people to understand what conversations have already been had before reaching out, but it's on my radar. I would love to see one password. They actually have a flat pack in their own remote, which is a whole lot more work, but lets them be 100% in control of the permissions and whatnot. I'm definitely talking to folks though. I'd love for the Bitwarden client to be officially supported, for sure. I messaged Bitwarden a while back on a support form or something, but I'd love to pick that conversation back up. Which got a reply from Bitwarden. Please feel free to vote on or contribute to the feature request for Flatpak here, which sends you to a page not found. Very useful, but it shows that a page was there? I don't know. We'd love to hear more about what you'd want from it and to see how much interest the community has in seeing us prioritize this distribution. And for some reason, people in the replies got weird because they said distribution. It's not a distribution. It's a package manager. It is a distribution. It's a distribution of a package. I would do some things to get Vivaldi in a flat pack, if for no other reason than the automatic updates. I remember them saying they really couldn't due to technical reasons and the way that Chromium works. They provide a bash script that can install on pretty much anything, but it can be a pain to track down and update. Considering Chrome, Chromium, Edge, Brave are on FlatHub these days, it seems like it should be possible at least. I do recall there being something weird with conflicting sandboxing of Chromium and Flatpak though. Yeah, the way those ones work is using a version of Chromium that would have issues if Vivaldi used it. They just found it easier to make a bash script that puts everything in a folder for you and you can update it if you already have it. Along with things like Spotify and DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci is kind of a big one because that program is a nightmare to install on a rolling release. If you want to install that on Arch, 
good luck. You can install it at the start of the month. Any other time, have fun. Maybe it'll work. Probably won't, though. And whilst not being a proprietary project, one project did actually reach out to Cassidy because of this post. That being Modrinth. That's like a Minecraft mod thing. Doesn't entirely matter. We'd love to get the Modrinth app on Flatpak, but we've had some trouble doing so. Now, of the projects mentioned, there was one mentioned a couple of times more than the others. That being Discord. Now, Discord is kind of an interesting one because... Apparently, there are people at the company that are using Linux, that are interested in having proper Wayland support, working properly with portals. But, you know, when you're at a big proprietary company, there needs to be resource allocation, you need to justify why this is something your time should be spent on. And apparently, there were some developers discussing this on an issue on one of the Discord GitHubs. I've not been able to find this issue, so I cannot verify it. But if it is true, that would be great to see. Now, Discord, like most projects out there, up until recently provided very few options. We have Deb and TarGZ. There are no instructions here. If you click on Deb, it just downloads. It doesn't tell you what you need to do with it. It doesn't tell you how you do it on other distros. What this Deb is for, is this Deb made for the dependencies on Ubuntu, the dependencies on Mint, the dependencies on Debian? No idea what version is it for. I don't know. Just download it and see if it works. And if you're on anything else, I don't know. Good luck. Have fun, I guess. A lot of projects don't really provide proper options here. And I would imagine it's because they know most people who want to install the package are probably going to install it with their package manager anyway. So it's up to their distro to sort of deal with those problems. But it is kind of annoying. However... Whilst it is currently not listed here, it probably will be in the future, that post from Cassidy did actually have an effect. I'm happy to report the thanks in part to my efforts, but mostly thanks to Tingping, who is one of the maintainers of the Discord flat packs, doing tons of upfront work, and I can never say this name, this is George Stavrakis, constant help, and employees using Linux internally, Discord is now verified on Flathub. If we go over to the Flathub page for Discord, verified by discordapp.com. Now, I need to be clear about exactly what this means and what has currently changed. So basically, the way the flat pack was previously made is the maintainer took an existing Discord package and then unpacked it and repackaged it as a flat pack. And because Discord doesn't allow you to modify the client without breaking the TOS, there are only certain things that can be done to actually make the flat pack work better. Now, the flat pack is made directly by Discord themselves, and they can make any modifications they want and hopefully fix a lot of the issues that exist with using Discord as a flat pack. But right now, there are still a lot of problems with using Discord as a flat pack. To be fair, there's a lot of problems with just using Discord generally, especially if you're a Wayland user. But there are specific Flatpak things as well. And my favorite recent issue is this one right here. Recent revert breaks rendering on NVIDIA slash Wayland. The recent commit, this tag right here, completely breaks the rendering for me, where it was working flawlessly before. I'm getting back and forth hitching and flickering similar to when using X Wayland. Most noticeable when keying in text. Using NVIDIA driver, this number right here, with an RTX 3080 on Hyperland. Unfortunately, it seems like both are broken for different groups of users. So it breaks with the revert, and it breaks without the revert. <laughs> Which, you know, is one of these things that you can only work around so much when you're not allowed to just modify the entire client. Whilst we are entirely unsure about their internal build pipeline, by making the flat pack verified, by making this an official distribution of the flat pack, this hopefully empowers the internal developers to actually be given time to fix the problem. Because even if they have like one or two Linux users actually working on the Linux package, they probably want it working themselves. If they're using it themselves, they probably want to be able to spend the time to actually fix it. And whilst it is currently not listed on the Discord website, that is basically just a matter of time. Whilst it is a very small first step, it is still a first step nonetheless. 
So hopefully this means going forward, there's going to be some time spent to actually get Discord working properly on Linux, and not just on X11, but also over on Wayland as well, which has its own set of challenges, and as much as people want to deny it, Wayland is where we're going. It might not be today, but it's going to happen not that long into the future, and when it does, I want to make sure that everything is just working properly. So how do you make use of Discord? Do you use the web client? Do you use a native package? Or maybe you are already using the flat pack. I would love to know. So if you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, so the pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and Discord bad.